this uh, this is the April 6, 2021 meeting of the Esong Meadow uh, Planning Board. I like to call the um, the meeting to order. Those in attendance are Tide Richards, Pete Punderson, John Torsha, George Kingston, myself, Russell Denver, Bethany Yao, who is the Director of Planning and Community Development, and Rebecca Jones from the Office of Planning and uh, Community Development. So the first item is the um, approval of our last uh, board meeting. I hope everyone's had an opportunity to, well, before that. So I'm required to uh, indicate that this meeting is being recorded uh, through LCAT. And I ask anyone in the audience who might be recording the meeting, would you please raise your hand uh, so that you can be brought into the meeting and let us know um, uh, what method you are using to record the meeting. Nobody's recording. Thank you. So uh, to go back to the first item is the approval of the last board meeting minutes. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve the meeting minutes? Uh, so moved. And do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, by roll call, Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Kingston? Aye. And I'm an I as well, so that item passes. Mr. Clerk, first item, please. Uh, uh, we have site plan waivers, case SPRW 2021-8, request for site plan waiver for J. Inks Tattoo Studio at 143C Shaker Road, Suite 205, Assessor's Parcel ID 17-65-0 in an existing structure, a 1.14 plus or minus acre site, um, industrial zoning district. The applicant is James Boucher, 143C Shaker Road, East Long Meadow, Mass. And before Mr. Boucher comes into the meeting, um, I believe there was a note from the Board of Health. Do you want to read that into the record? Sure, so there's some work um, that needs to be signed off on for um, as far as the health department is concerned, and they asked that approval be conditional upon final check and sign off from the health department. Okay, thank you. Mr. Boucher, um, oh, there you go. Hi. You're, uh, you're muted. How's that? Good, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. So I guess what we'd like to just start with is tell us a little bit of something about yourself, about your business, uh, the location, what anticipated hours of operation are going to be, uh, some idea on the number of customers on a daily basis, and we can start from there. Sure. Um, so I've been uh, in the tattoo business for about 14 years. Um, uh, Full-time tattooing, uh, probably about six of those. Uh, I have, um, I'm a retired police officer, uh, retired military. Um, we are uh, opening, hopefully opening and Shaker Road, like you said, um, a spa-like like atmosphere, not a walk-in shop atmosphere. So regardless of COVID restrictions or not, it's appointment only, um, sort of an art studio feel, unlike what many people picture as a, as a tattoo studio shop or parlor that's not what the intent is okay um so so we're probably looking at two to three people a day the most okay uh traditional hours of operation are going to be usually between noon and 8 p.m okay um i'll open up questions from the board any questions for the petitioner and my understanding is the um health department is is waiting for licenses or, or what? I, I believe uh, the, ap the applications are in. We're just waiting for approval on from the health department, correct? Okay. So I, I guess we, uh, when we vote on this, if we vote in the affirmative, it would be uh, conditional upon final approval from the Board of Health. That's, that's what I understand, correct. Okay. So uh, not hearing any any other questions or any discussion, do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, by roll call, Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Punderson? I uh, will be uh, 
uh, previously recorded um, conditions. Right. Yep. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Kingston? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Best, best of luck to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Next item. Uh, case SPRW 2021-9, uh, request for site plan uh, review waiver for red five toys and collectibles, a toy comic and collectible shop at 57 Maple Street, GIS 55 Maple Street, Assessor's Parcel ID 27-15-0 in an existing structure of 0.57 plus or minus acre site in the business zoning district. The application the applicant is Braun Rushby, 751 Mountain Road, Suffield, Connecticut. So could I ask the applicant to raise a hand because I don't see that name on the list. Okay, thank you. Evelyn Connors. Sorry, here I am. I think it might be coming through as Evelyn Connors, who was, who yes. is my niece, who set up Zoom on my computer by accident. So, okay. so, so we can hear you, but we can't see you. Can you uh, hit the, the video button? Yeah. Let me see what I can do here. Yep. Yeah, should be able to. Okay. Perfect. Definitely right. not an Evelyn Connors. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can rename you if you want. Uh, it's okay. We'll, we'll, we All right. So, so hopefully you heard the uh, the previous uh, item. So we'd like to find out something about you, about the business, hours of operation, customers, uh, commercial vehicles, yes or no. I mean, that that type of thing. Yeah, sure. Um, so I have been in retail some just about fifty. So I've been in retail since I was eighteen. So I've been in retail a long time. Most of my career has been with Nordstrom. Um, corporately out in Seattle. I just moved back recently, uh, last August. Um, so I was managing Nordstrom stores. I was also a multi-channel buyer for men's denim. Um, so I've held a lot of positions within management and procurement. Um, moving back here after I had a case of cancer in 2019. Um, so that kind of puts your life into perspective. So opening a toy shop is something I always wanted to do, but never kind of got around to doing it. So moving home um, with my wife and my daughter allowed me to finally take the leap into it and give it a shot on our own. So a lot of experience, again, in sales management and uh, procurement uh, and an avid fan of the products in which I'm selling. So we're looking to be open 10 to six during the week and then 10 to eight on the weekends, probably closed one day in there. I'm thinking probably Wednesday, um, but then open the other six days of the week. Commercial vehicles, no, uh, at this point, there's not a need for a commercial vehicle for the business. That would just be my personal vehicle parked behind the building. Okay, good. Um, just curious and maybe Bethany, you can uh, maybe fill me in. So. Um, I, I, I mentioned to Bethany that we previously permit or we previously granted a site plan waiver, I believe for that location, uh, for a convenience store. Um, so I, I'm going to ask Bethany, this is more for the board, to identify um, other site plan waivers that have been granted over the last few years that never opened. And then this board may consider uh, revoking any um, of already approved waivers from different sites so that we just kind of administratively clean that up. So we'll go from there. So I'm going to open it to the board. Uh, board, have any questions for the petitioner? It seems like a good use for the building, for the, that yeah. site. Yeah. I know you already have a sign up. Yo, we're, we're complete. I've been. Uh... I've been building it out. So we're, we're pretty close to built out on the inside with the sign up, uh, targeting an opening date of May the 4th. For all Star Wars nerds, no May the 4th be with you. Um, and then we're gonna partly open the same weekend as the ice cream shop across the street. So we're gonna quietly be open then, but then have the grand opening on that Tuesday. Is there a particular theme for what you're doing? I mean, 
what sets you apart? Uh, you know, so we focus, you know, I know there's, there's a toy store in Longmeadow and that focuses more on adolescent toys um, and educational toys. We're going to focus a little bit more on preteen, teen, young adult, comic book focused sci-fi, dealing heavily in uh, vintage toys from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. We probably have 2,000 pieces of that we've recently acquired. Um, and then Funko Pops, which is huge with kids and action figures and all that kind of stuff. So I'm trying to do a toy store <laughs> via the way Nordstrom does business because that's what I know. So it's going to be a uh, customer service focused, customer centric, really trying to get out into the community. I've been reaching out to different places in which we can help support and you know, I'm trying to get with the Isong Meadow board. How can I sponsor softball teams or the footballs, you know, something. We want to be really involved in the community and do everything in a high level of service. Great. Good. Any other questions from the board? Hearing none, do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. By roll call, Mr. Richards. Yes. Mr. Punderson. Aye. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Kingston? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Best of luck and welcome to town. Thank you much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Okay. Case SBRW 2021-10. Request for site plan review waiver for a home office for Lizovets Group Services LLC at 43 White Avenue, Assessor's Parcel ID 27-43-13. And a 0.25 plus or minus acre site in the residential zoning district, C zoning district. The applicant is Natalia and Mikhail Liskovets. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. Liskovets. Hey, Thank you. Uh, yep. 43 White Avenue, East Long Meadow, Mass. Sorry about that. Hello. Okay. How are you? I'm well. Thank you. So uh, tell us about what. You know what you have in mind uh you know for that location uh um right now i'm i'm a roofer okay. and uh i want to get my my own thing going uh, i work currently for a company with uh, service work pretty much all over the connecticut Rhode island uh, yeah, we're all over. So uh, I work right now, and uh, they do sub in uh, roofs to sub, and I want to become as a sub, a sub in there right from the company I work for. So what what do you anticipate will be the activity at that location? Uh, just. There won't be no a lot of activities. Just my truck park, pretty much. Yeah, just home office uh, to receive phone calls and register the business. Basically, um, we want to start our family. We have boys growing up, so in the future, we're thinking of having them get involved and continuing with them. Okay. So, questions from the board? Uh, you mentioned that you'll have your truck there. Um, is that Will that be garaged? Uh, yeah, I have a, a big garage, but right now I have a, a 2500 that I work in it every day because I park on the outside. Well, yeah. the, the issue is that we, we don't allow uh, commercial vehicles to be parked commercial. outside where they can be seen. So you would either have to garage it or yeah, put it in the backyard or something like that okay yeah okay yeah that's one that's one of the number one zoning violations that uh, we hear from individual uh residents about commercial vehicles being yep. parked uh in in that uh, in their neighbor's yard or neighbor's driveway so we want to make sure that you're aware of that that issue so you know i have a special uh spot for you know for the truck and the trailer but I don't even use a trailer, you know. So, as long as they're not uh, 
as long as you can't see them from the from the public road, um, you would be okay. So. Yep, yep. Yeah, I should be. No okay. Any other questions for the petitioner? Yeah. Will there be any storage of, of materials at your home? No, Working no. The, the, uh, I mean, the, the people I'm going to stop the roof out, I uh, pretty much they uh, get everything to the roof. They deliver it from manufacturing right to the site. I won't have nothing at the end, you know. Okay. Whatever uh, rubbish left, they'll go in the dumpster and okay. wash hands off. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Hearing none, do I hear a motion? So I'll move. I'll so second it. Motion made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, by roll call, Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Kingston? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So this item passes. Uh, best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. So I, I'm going to ask uh, if the board is okay that we take uh, the next three uh, items in a row. I believe they are item four, five, and six. We'll have tied read each, um, and then we can discuss uh, as a group. Tied? I'll make a motion to combine the three of them. Thank you. Do I have a second on that? No, I'll second it. So discussion? Hearing none, so uh, combining all three, Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Torsha? And Mr. Kingston? Aye. And I'm a yes, so we're gonna combine all three. Good evening, John. Hello, hey. how are you? So I need uh, Tide to read these into the record first. Okay, case SPRW 2021-11, request for site plan review waiver waiver for Atlantic Handling Systems, DBA of Mayberry Associates, Inc., a manufacturer and distributor of industrial and logistics products at 90 Denslow Road, Assessor's Parcel ID 10-15-1 on a 17.54 plus or minus acre site in the Industrial Garden Zoning District. The applicant is John Mayberry, 90 Denslow Road, East Longmeadow, Mass. Number five, case SPRW 2021-12, request for site plan review waiver for New England Grow Rooms, DBA Mayberry Associates, Inc., a manufacturer and distributor of industrial and logistics products in 90 Denslow Road, Sussex Parcel ID 10-15-1, on a 17 plus or minus acre site in the industrial garden zoning district. The applicant is John Mayberry, 90 Denslow Road, East Long Meadow, Mass. Case SPRW 2021-13, request for site plan review waiver for New England Clean Rooms, DBA Mayberry Associates, Inc., a manufacturer and distributor of industrial logistics products at 90 Denslow Road, Justice Parcel ID 10-15-1, and a 17.54 plus or minus acre site in the industrial zoning district. The applicant is John Mayberry, 90 Denzel Road, East Long Meadow, Mass. Good evening, John. Hello. Can you, uh, can you give us a, uh, you know, some comments on these, please? I certainly can. So all of this comes about because we changed um, lending institutions. And so in order for the deposits of the checks that we receive to those DBAs, to be recognized on the check and recognized by the bank. They wanted to have uh, business certificates filed with the town. I thought once upon a time, most of them were filed, but I guess the records weren't exactly in place to show all of them. So I figured I'd just go through the motions. I think we discovered that Mayberry material handling is already there. I'm pretty sure New England grow rooms, New England clean rooms I did just a few years ago, but. And then the other one's been operating, Atlanta ha Atlantic Handling's been operating for 10 years. Uh, likewise, I think I thought I had them all square at the town, but it's business as usual at Mayberry. What we actually provide in those, because one of the names might catch people's attention. So we've been providing uh, modular office structures for 35, 40 years to uh, companies all over, quite frankly, all over the country. But we then got into clean rooms for um, customers that needed clean rooms for medical purposes and, you know, to do things where the environment needs to be of a class of clean. 
Um, so we got into that business and then now in the grow industry, they also have medical needs. So we are doing rooms um, for uh, people that set up shops for growing a variety of things um, within those rooms. We do not do any growing. We don't touch any grow products. We simply provide uh, the mechanicals and the buildings to do that. Thank you. Questions from the board? Well, I, I think that's pretty neat, <laughs> to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's some good thinking. I like that. <laughs> Great. Um, hearing no further questions, do I hear a motion to approve all uh, item four, five, and six? Motion I'll made to approve that. all three items. George, you second, second that? Man. Okay. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Hearing none by roll call, Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Ke uh, Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Torsha? John, we can't hear you. Yes. Can okay, you thank you. Uh, George, uh, Mr. Kingston? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Those items pass. Thank you, John. Thank you again, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye. Next item. Uh, case SPRW 2021-14, request for site plan waiver for the Baker Mama, a home office for a cottage food licensed home baking business at 12 Cross Meadow Road, says this parcel ID 61-52-42 on a 0.59 plus or minus acre site in a residential A zoning district. The applicant is Allison Rush, 12 Cross Meadow Road, East Long Meadow, Mass. Hello. Um, just uh, before we get started, Bethany, are there any any comments from Board of Health or other boards on this issue, on this item? Um, she's all set as far as the Board of Health goes. Um, there may be issues based on how the board has voted on this sort of application in the past, um, but George can fill us in on that if he'd like to. So we'll hear from, the, from Allison Rush. Can you sure. just tell us a little bit about the, the business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, pretty much I just love baking and I wanted to do it on a bigger scale. Um, so ideally I'd be doing little dessert boxes every week or couple weeks and I'd be dropping them off to people in East Longmeadow or neighboring towns. Um, so there'd be minimal traffic um, at our residence. Um, but yeah, ultimately seeking the um, cottage food license just so I'd be able to make and distribute things out of my kitchen. Questions from the board? Well, I'll make a comment. Um, in the past, we've interpreted this as manufacturing mm -hmm. in a residential area, and I know that we have denied a couple of these in the past. Um, the only comment to the board is that if we were to approve this, it would set a precedent mm -hmm. uh, for doing uh, this kind of operation. And uh, I think we need to think about whether we want to change our policy on this. I understand it, it's a very small scale operation at the yeah, moment. Very. <laughs> uh, and, and for this individual, it may stay that way. But um, if we approve it for this individual, then we are setting a precedent that uh, we should approve it for anyone with a cottage license. Um, Cottage license is, is really more with regard to the health department and, and, and those sorts of things than it is to the zoning. And um, I would question whether this is an allowed use, but I leave it to the board to, to think about that. So maybe this is a question of for Bethany, but the cottage license, are there restrictions on the size of the operation? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure on that. I can check it out now. Well, while Bethany's checking that out, um, are there other questions from the board or any comments with respect to Mr. Kingston's? Well, uh, I, I have had the same experience in the past years on the board that that's considered manufacturing. Um, precedent setting is tough, but times have changed completely. People do things from their homes a lot more than they used to. Right. And I don't know if it's time for the planning board to maybe take a look at what we have just not approved in the past and maybe change things. I'm not sure if that's right or not. 
Bethany probably will be able to answer the question I have, like like you have, is how far can you go? How big can you get? Because you don't want somebody like in their garage welding welding up uh, statues or sculptures or you know what I mean, something like that happening. Absolutely, Jonathan. So, like, what would be like to kind of George? What would be like? What have been some of the um, things in the past that have come by? Have people attempted to do large scale? Um, uh, this on a more larger scale, like what would be kind of the drawbacks? It was, again, very similar to um, what the applicant is talking about. Uh, at that time, I don't know whether the cottage license was even created because it was never discussed uh, by the applicant with the board, but it was someone who, yeah, who wanted to do catering basically out of their house. Okay. And, um, we did not allow that mm. and they eventually went ahead and rented a commercial kitchen to do what they wanted to do um it really doesn't fall under the auspices of a home office okay which is what we're, we're being applied for um and it is a gray area so i i again i think the board needs to consider whether or not we want to move into this uh, this way or whether we want to look at a perhaps a, a change to the zoning bylaw or, or what but um, right now it's it's not it's not clearly a an allowed use is all I can say Bethany do you have any answers for us um, not as far as the size of the operation most of the information on the cottage licenses as far as food goes um, has to do with sanitation and um, certain foods that aren't permitted, um, how to go about cleaning a space and who's allowed to actually make the food. Mm. What's the board's pleasure? Do you, do you wish to um, continue this until our next meeting so we can maybe get some more direction from the Board of Health. Do we want to maybe have Bethany check and see how some other surrounding communities are handling something like this, uh, just to give us some direction and some, some guidance on, as Pete said, you know, times are changing and people are doing different things uh, in their homes. And, um, you know, if, if other communities are doing it, are they putting restrictions on it? What types of restrictions are there, I, I understand, you know, Allison, I understand your your desire to get started, um, but obviously one of the roles of the planning board is to protect. Um, yeah, no, I completely understand, you know, yeah. Protect the town, so um, would you be um, upset or would you be okay with a, you know, at least a two week uh, continuation? Yeah, that's fine, whatever you guys need, if there's anything I can do in the meantime, I'm happy to provide samples if you guys want them, so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, you know, I, I, I do worry about George saying, um, you know, he mentioned that it, it's small now. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't think in a residential district, we want something to get too big and turning into a catering business. Totally understand. That's not where I'm looking to yeah. go with it. I mean, I have so, two small kids, so I'm really just trying to do something on the side. So definitely don't have plans to they're going to eat all your profit is what they're going to exactly. do. Exactly. See? <laughs> so I think, uh, would I hear a motion to continue this for uh, to at least our next uh, board meeting? I'll make some move. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Any discussion? I'd just like to ask Bethany to look at how the surrounding towns do this, particularly Wolverham, Hamden, Long Meadow. Yeah. Sure. Can I, make, you know, can I make one comment? Sure. Before there would be a vote to approve, I think we'd have to look at the bylaws. Something would have to be changed in order to approve it because it currently it, it's it's manufacturing. Nothing, no way you can get around that. And I, we can't just spot approve it without it being written that that's okay to do. Yeah. So the continuation is also just to to get it back in front of this board on our agenda so okay. that we can at least find out if other communities are doing how they did it and if yeah. they created a new bylaw and so it, i just want to make sure that it stays uh, you know in front of us yeah and it's not something that we you know kind of keep putting down the road i don't want to do that. so okay. i think it would be wise i mean we don't want to see it get too big so i think looking at the bylaw because you know this type of stuff that you know allison is doing i think 
would be probably suitable to, in my opinion in a home but to put maybe on those restrictions because you know things are changing the world's changing and people yeah. are working home there's also a board of health issues that she'd have to go to i'm sure yeah they would they would have to look at it so i'm, I'm sure bethany can meet with um Amy and discuss that as well a little bit so so if there i, I believe there was a motion made and seconded um, by roll call. So this is to continue this item to our next meeting, which is um, April 20th. So by roll call, uh, Mr. Mr. Richards. Yeah, yes. Mr. Punderson. Aye. Mr. Torsha. Yes. Mr. Kingston. Aye. And I'm a yes as well. Allison, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Great, sounds good. Thank you all. Have a Thank you. Next item, Mr. Clerk. Uh, case SP 2021-3-642-644 North Main Street. Request by applicant for special permit for a restaurant is 642-644 North Main Street. So this is parcel ID 1-5-1 in a business zoning district. The applicant is George uh, Acheris, 642 North Main Street, East Long Meadow, Mass. So Bethany, before we kind of hear from the petitioner, can you just give the board a little history uh, on this on this matter? Sure. So um, the site was originally a restaurant, and it, he would have been grandfathered in if he had opened within, um, I think, 24 months. Um, unfortunately, with a combination of COVID and the major reconstruction he did within the restaurant, um, he fell outside of that time frame. So that's why he's back before us with a special permit. Okay, great. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good evening. Welcome. So, we'd like to hear from you. All right, uh, I'm Joel Castleman. I'm uh, Mr. Corris's attorney, and uh, we're here, as Bethany explained, because we just fell outside that 24-month uh, window, uh, partially because of the COVID uh, that hit uh, approximately a year ago. As you may know, George was in front of the board to get a sign approval last December. Uh, the anticipated opening date was going to be sometime in the spring of 2020. And then with COVID, uh, obviously, that's all been uh, pushed back. Um, uh, my client's been working on this building for over two years now. He spent close to a million dollars, uh, half a million dollars to purchase the property, uh, over $300,000 in renovations, uh, include a new roof, uh, all new plumbing, all new electrical, all the ba bathrooms have been redone. They're all uh, ADA compliant now. He's built uh, the only uh, outside uh, modification has been a ramp, uh, handicap ramp from the parking lot so that the property is handicapped accessible. Uh, the inside, uh, he's done a, a fantastic job uh, with the interior and the renovations in both the basement and the first floor. Uh, this property has been a restaurant for many, many years. Uh, certainly not changing the, uh, uh, the, uh, any of the uh, outside exterior features or even the interior for that matter in terms of seating and accessibility. Uh, the character of the neighborhood, uh, as you're all aware, there are restaurants very nearby. There's the small shopping mall next door. Uh, this property has its own parking, uh, which Mr. Kors, uh, and we've submitted a plan, and Kevin uh, has seen the plan for uh, uh, have the parking lot uh, restriped. Uh, that's to take place probably next month. Uh, there will be 51 total parking spaces, three handicap spaces. 48 regular spaces. Uh, you know, seating capacity, we have 154 seats planned right now. Uh, the intention is, and again, with COVID, and uh, my client could address this if need be, but uh, it's been a terrible time for all restaurants right now, the industry, to get uh, uh, personnel, to get employees. Uh, and I told him today, I've never seen more advertisements in the Reminder and in the Springfield Papers restaurants advertising for cooks, for waiters, for servers, for hostesses. And so that is uh, 
somewhat of a drawback because uh, my client, uh, you know, is anxious to get uh, the place open, obviously, uh, should a special permit be granted. Uh, I think everything else, and uh, Bethany could certainly address it, everything else other than I think the food permit, which has been applied for, and Don has to go in once we get this app, uh, permit approved and go through the kitchen and everything else that's all been renovated. Uh, but the goal is that uh, hopefully to open in the next uh, month to two months and uh, and be up and operating. And, uh, you know, I know everybody's been anticipating it for a long time and the people have driven by Pasquale's, the old Pasquale's and seen the changes and the signs been up and, uh, you know, there's been articles in the newspaper and uh, unfortunately we just missed that window to be grandfathered in. So here we are again, uh, trying to get a special permit so that, uh, you know, uh, because it is zoned business and under, uh, you know, uh, 3.077, the accepted uses, we need a special permit to operate a restaurant in the business zone there. And uh, that's why we're here uh, before you today. Uh, I certainly don't think that uh, continuing the use as a restaurant, which has been for many, many years, is going to adversely affect the neighborhood in any way. And I, I believe that the improvements that George has made and, uh, you know, when you walk, I, I've been inside the building and it's, it's just incredible, uh, you know, that I think if nothing else, it's an asset probably to that, to the community, the surrounding area, certainly not a detriment and it certainly hasn't changed the character whatsoever of what's been there and what's existed for many, many years. Um, any questions from the board before we open it to the public hearing? I just, Bethany, uh, do we meet the parking uh, formula? Yes, Kevin signed off on it. Okay, good. Thank you. Ty? Um, how much did uh, we did he miss the grandfather by? How much time? I think Bethany can address that, but I believe it was about two months. We closed in December uh, originally, and so I think it would have been December of 2020 would have been, uh, you know, uh, the two month, the 24 month period. Can you tell me what the proposed hours of operation are going to be? Yeah, you know, uh, originally uh, we submitted in the plan, uh, rather than the application, we said two to midnight uh, because George just with this COVID, he's just not sure about when to open for lunch. However, we'd like to have the hours, permitted hours from 11 to midnight, just so that when he does get around to, once he gets going and feels comfortable enough and can get people in the door, uh, he'd like to open for lunches as well. But it's, uh, you know, it, it's a restaurant. It's certainly not a bar, it's a restaurant. And that's how we're gonna operate it. Okay. Any other questions from the board? It's, it's the old blue moon, as far as I'm concerned, from my childhood. <laughs> well, well, you're dating yourself. Huh? It, was, it was a great place, trust me, but it's, it's been a great restaurant. Um, it, it's, it's just something that should be there. So that's... that's I, I, I've been around for 60-something years. I remember the blue moon, too, and it was a good place. To, <laughs> it's always been a good location. Yeah. So if you have a very good memory, there used to be church used to be held there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I attended it. So <laughs> you're kidding me No. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, now open it up to the public. So if there's anyone who wishes to be heard on this matter, there is a uh, button at the bottom of your uh, screen that says raise hand. If you raise your hand, you'll be brought into the meeting and you can make your comments uh, on this matter. I don't see anybody. You don't see anyone? Nope. One more time. Anyone wish to be heard on this matter? Hearing none, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Uh, motion made by George, second by Pete, by roll call. Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Kingston? Aye. And I'm a yes, so the public hearing is closed. Are there any other questions um, of the petitioner or any comments from the board? I just have a question. What's your cuisine? Uh, Wood-fired pasta and all handmade pastas. Uh, uh, Wood-fired pizza and all handmade pasta, sorry. Um, everything from scratch. Nothing, uh, 
nothing's going to be brought in pre-made, everything done in-house. Um, we, we put in a second kitchen in the basement. I heard that. Yeah. We do all the prep actually, uh, because of COVID, we actually completely finished the basement in the uh, downstairs. So, um, we haven't been sitting on our laurels. We, we were ready to open up last March and that's what we wanted to do. And yeah. COVID hit and, you know, mass shut down right. And I, I'll give credit because I own a restaurant in Connecticut. Massachusetts did a bang up job in the beginning, getting all the information to the, uh, to the restaurant tours. And they actually helped my restaurant in Connecticut. Um, and that's somewhere where I thought Massachusetts signed shine versus Connecticut. But we look, we all look forward to opening up establishment that the town can be proud of. The, the, uh, the wood fired, the wood fired pizza is going to be something. I mean, if you've been in, you, you haven't been in yet, but I'm sure you've seen them in other locations, but they've got those huge copper pizza ovens right in the middle of the restaurant. So it, it's spectacular. I can't wait. Great. Well, I tell you what, I wouldn't mind some of Allison's desserts. The woman that was before us, I, I wouldn't mind tasting those wares. <laughs> she offered them to you guys. I, you showed a lot of restraint by saying no. So I would like to um, ask the board whether we actually want to place a condition on the closing hours, just so it's on, on the record uh, of being midnight. I don't think we really need to address the opening hours, but um, make that a condition of the permit. Do, do I hear any discussion, any second on that, or if someone wants to make a motion? Does, does he actually have to change his hours on the application from the 11 to the 12 at night? I'm not sure, Bethany. We, we had 12, excuse me, we had 12 at night. The problem was we had two o'clock as the opening. We right. We changed that to 11, so. That's why I'm wondering, does he have to change that, the additional hours on the application, Bethany? I'm not, not sure. on the application. It would just be um, a condition in the decision. Okay. Thank you. Do I, have, do I have a motion on that condition? I'll make a motion to approve with the condition that opening hour is 11 o'clock and closing hours is midnight. I second that. Okay, motion made and seconded. So this is actually on the approval of the special permit with the condition uh, that was just referenced. So any other discussion? Hearing none by roll call, Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Punderson? Motion to approve. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Kingston? Aye. Mr. Torsha? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Best of luck to you, congratulations. Yeah, I've been waiting to get, get that stuff for a year, two years now, so. <laughs> so I, I guess just for people who might be watching, so when is the date? <laughs> George, George, that's your, that's your job. So, so uh, I was talking right now at Golden Irene's, we are offering, we're trying to get staff here to open up to dine in here. And right now it's so bad. We're, we're starting people at 15 up to, up to 17, $18 an hour with a signing bonus and health insurance after six months. And we can't even get applicants. Wow. And it, it, maybe somebody's watching right now on this it's crazy it's it's unbelievable yeah. so i'm hoping because there was there's a lot of uh hype about redstone in the area that we won't have such a hard time finding applicants because it's it's it's, it's a more centralized location than we are now yeah. and if we can get everything going i wouldn't be surprised to have that thing open in a couple of months great okay best of luck to you thank you, thank you. next item mr clerk uh, case SP-E 2021-1 Zero Grove Street, request by applicant for an earth removal permit for the excavation of 4.95 plus or minus acres for a previously approved self-storage facility located at Zero Grove Street, census parcel ID 15-32-E. The applicant is all-purpose storage at Beast Long Meadow LLC, 4023 Dean Martin Drive, Las Vegas, Nevada. Hello. So I, I, I see Mr. Castleman still on. Are you here for the he's, excavation? He's frozen. Oh, he's frozen. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's gone, but the image is there. I, okay. This happened earlier today. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Cravo, are you the petitioner for this matter? Correct. Okay. 
So tell us what you right. what you have going on. Okay. All right. Uh, for the record, Philippe Cravo from Isle of Act Associates are here tonight to uh, present the special permit application for earth removal for the proposed self-storage facility at the end of Baldwin Street. Um, I'm not sure if the members of the board recall the project specifically, but um, basically there was a planned uh, self-storage facility at the property at the end of Baldwin Street that was approved um, back in 2018. Uh, so we have gone through the, the planning board process as well as the Conservation Commission process. So we have both those permits. Um, the last permit that we are seeking is the special permit for the um, earth for the earthwork associated with the construction of that project itself. Um, and that's what you have before you here. I can uh, run through the plans if there's any particular questions or- I, um, I, I would imagine that people who are are possibly watching this who our neighbors would want to know how it's going to be done when it's going to be done what precautions are going to be taken with respect to like noise and dust and related matters so if you could address those I think that would be helpful sure. yep uh, okay um, it says could share uh, a PDF but I'm I can guessing. I can give you screen sharing okay Go ahead, Philippe. Got it. Thank you. Okay, so you should be seeing a PDF on your screen right now. Um, so just uh, as a rundown of the previously approved project, uh, the terminus of Baldwin Street um, is right here. It kind of ends. There's a parking lot right off the end of Baldwin Street. It's sort of a wooded parcel. Uh, basically, the project would um, connect the driveway to the end of Baldwin Street. We'll have the office right up, right up uh, as you drive up the driveway, and then the storage buildings, self-storage buildings, towards the rear of the parcel. Um, now, the, the you know the nature of a self-storage facility is that you have long, flat buildings, right? So, in order to accommodate the, the just the, the, the pretty much a level site across um, the proposed project. Um, there's going to be you know a, a, a cut along the northern or the western property line. Um, so, so you can see the you can see that as uh, dictated by the grading along the northern property line here. Now during the planning board process, uh, we went through a peer review with a consultant from the town. So this, you know, everything was peer reviewed, uh, responded to and addressed and it was approved. Uh, we are doing a number of uh, landscaping features along that Northern property line here, as you can see, in order to uh, mitigate visually the, the, the facility from the residential properties to the West. Um, one thing to note is that the, um, the grade, the finished grade of say like uh, the driveways around the uh, the self storage facilities is, you know, it's lower than than all of the topography at the end of Fifth Street and along the property line to the west. Um, basically, uh, if I can go back a page here, um, the finished grade up here is around 227. The end of Fifth Street is 232. So yet you're about five feet lower. So you're looking down, you know, if you could see anything, you're looking down into the site. So it, the earth excavation permit is just for the earthwork associated with basically creating a, a flat site across the property here. Um, you know, in, 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 in order to achieve those grades, you'd have, you know, your standard, your earthwork, you'd have your erosion control installed, um, you, you, probably have some stockpiles um, just as material gets moved. You have stockpiles to be trucked off. Uh, standard construction hours by seven to three, uh, Monday to Friday. Um, and any, they, it's, it's under a, a stormwater pollution prevention permit, um, which would have control of, of any nuisances such as dust or any, any of those uh, concerns that might come about during the construction. 
So you, you just mentioned dust. How, how would you go about controlling dust on, on a project like this? Uh, water. Water yep. trucks? Water trucks, yep. Um, just spray it, spray it down on a particularly, you know, dry, dry day or sunny, mm -hmm. hot day. I just water it down every once in a while. So you mentioned hours uh, seven to three. Um, what is the anticipated length of time to do the work? Um, I'm not exactly sure, but I think something, they want to get it up and running as soon as possible. I believe, uh, you know, somewhere around six months is what was stated in the application. So that seems pretty reasonable um, to be right around that time. Six months to clear the site? To, to get the earthwork, get all the grades ready for foundations and, and uh, ready for pavement, yeah. I mean, if they start today, you know, they're probably paving in the fall is, they, is what it comes down to, you know, or looking to, to get some pavement down in the fall. Okay. Uh, other questions from the board members before we open it to the public hearing? Uh, my question would be, where is the removed material going and what route will they take? So the, the route would be down Baldwin Street, which extends to, I forget, it's the, the main street at the end of Baldwin Street, I forget the name. Maple. Maple Street, yeah. thank you. Um, so that's the, the most direct route because it's right at, coming right off the end of the driveway. There's no other um, access to the site. Uh, so it'd be coming down here. And um, I mean, the, where it's going would probably be to, you know, someone like, uh, you know, uh, uh, an earth, you know, an earth. Well, I guess my, my real question is, are you going east or west from there? Yeah, um, I'm not exactly sure what, what the exact route is, whatever shorter, the shortest route is to where they would be taking the material. Um, I don't have that answer, like where they're taking it to at the, at the moment, but I can certainly get that answer for you. Yeah, my, my concern is having these large trucks going through the rotary. Right. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah I think they would want to avoid the rotary. <coughs> well, then you have to go west. <laughs> right. Okay. Toward, yeah, toward, I mean, if you're heading towards 91, um, I'm not going to comment on how you get through Long Meadow, but going through East Long Meadow, it, it, it's straightforward. Okay, yeah. if you're going the other direction, you end up going through the circle or the pseudo circle, and that's a real traffic issue. So I would highly recommend that uh, we move the truck to the west. Okay. How, how many cubic yards are you re removing? Uh, there's about, <coughs> I believe the calculation was about 19,000 cubic yards. So approximately 100 truckloads? No, no, a lot more than that. Well, it's 18 yards in a 10 wheeler. Yeah, you're right. So, so if you go. You said 19,000 yards. 19,000, yeah. Oh, 19, 000, yeah. yeah, about 1,000. 1, 1000 yeah, 1,000, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of trucks. Especially if they get trailer dumps in there. That's a, that's a lot of commotion, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. Certainly, it's it's associated with that's, all these that, 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 that's, a, that's over a thousand truckloads, and it, it, eighteen yeah. pair trucks. Mm -hmm. I, I would suggest that we um, condition this on hours of operation. Um, I, I would be very concerned about that amount of truck traffic going through in the middle of the night. Let's say because. Oh. Maple Street is residential, yep. and the only way to get through Longmeadow is residential. Yeah, um, we'll certainly try to avoid those well, rush hour. I would say rush hour, but <laughs> COVID, you know, rush hours. Yeah, we we do have a rush hour when the school gets out, <laughs> right? Um, and when uh, Carter Monday changes shifts. Um, but I'm, I'm more concerned about trucks going through at three o'clock in the morning and hitting their Jake brakes. Yeah. Yeah, um, you know that we're gonna get lots of complaints if that happens. Yeah, I don't think any, there's gonna be any trucks working overnight. Uh, that's certainly not if we condition it. Yeah, right. 
All right, any other questions or concerns to the petitioner before we open it to the public for, for comments in the public hearing? Hearing none, I now uh, open this um, public hearing on this matter. So I'll, I'll repeat, there is at the bottom of the screen, it says raise hand. If you could click the raise hand and uh, Mr. Mackey will be able to bring it into the meeting for, for your comments regarding this, this matter. <clears throat> so Mr. Denver, I did see one raised hand earlier. The person's identified, as you can see, is already in the meeting by Galaxy Note 2. I was, I did so on the belief that it was uh, a, a petitioner relative to this case, but I don't okay. know if that's the case, so. <laughs> okay, so if that individual wishes to be heard, can you just identify yourself and, and uh, please provide your comments. Hi, my name is Kelly Bruce. I live at 19 Culkins Avenue in East Longmeadow. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of concerns and I know the construction and the, the, the removal of the trees from the beginning part of Baldwin Street has already started to occur. And I've heard it, I'm currently working from home and I've heard it from seven to three o'clock. Like it's like he stated every day, including Saturday. Um, there's no noise reduction on the side. So you're talking about removing over a thousand trucks, loads of fill and dirt and gravel for a six month period, what is um, going to be done for all the noise? Mr. Calvi? <laughs> Philippe, you're muted. Yeah, I had a like, daughter barged in. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, as far as noise reduction there, you know, we can set up some screening probably, you know, we could probably build a, a, a like sort of, a, of an earthen berm until we get down below grade along the, the residential properties that'll help mitigate some of the, the you know, the, the sound. It'll give us something to sort of like deflect off of if we build the berm along those residential properties. Um, I think that's really other than that, it's you know excavators and, and, and dump trucks being being um, operating on on the parcel. You have additional comments, ma'am? Yeah, I had a couple of additional comments. Um, so the property that abuts uh, to this land and why we got notification is all wetlands, and we go up to the railroad track. So then from the railroad track, you have the track line, the pipeline that's owned by Buckeye, and then the property that's starting. On the um, paperwork and the diagram, there's no shadow of any trees being replanted on this side, uh, walls, or any other type of thing. Those lights are going to come right into our property. And I mean, I can already see rocky from where I am. <laughs> so you're, you're talking about nine acres of property and light and, and commotion that could be potential and the storage hours again for 24 seven. So there's no restriction of people going in or out. So um, ma'am, these were discussed during the uh, initial uh, special permit hearing. Uh, that granted the, the permit for the storage units. The, there is a requirement that all of the lighting be um, down, downward lighting, I believe is the best uh, phrase to use that, if I'm, that's the right phrase. Um, and then there is uh, tree lines that are being put along the berm area to further reduce any light intrusion upon the neighborhood. Maybe you could put that back up. You can show the tree line that's being put in there. Yeah, it's on the opposite side. On the railroad track side? There's nothing. Yeah, so so maybe I'm I'm not uh, following where your house is located. 
So east of Baldwin. East of Baldwin. <laughs> I'm on the other side of the per the brook. So my house, if you go off North Main Street, Calkins Avenue is the first left. Yeah. Past Rockies. It's a okay. dead end street. Yeah. Okay. And I'm the last house. So my okay. property goes yep. all the way to the railroad tracks. So I will see the back end of this facility. According to the plans and the diagrams I see, there's no tree line, there's no wall, there's nothing to protect that visual this anything. This is approved already. <laughs> Yep. So this 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 diagram, this layout, this was approved three years ago. Can you pull the chair? Yes. There was a previous approval before that one, and the appellants on the west side were very concerned, and the the approval was conditioned that there was a berm built and it was treed, and uh, with all the lighting, downward lighting, facing into the uh, into the. Uh, uh, well, then it was going to be a place to store trailers. So this is the third time this has come up. Um, nothing really to, that I can see has changed other than instead of trailers and a couple of buildings, it's all uh, uh, storage. And this is the first time this has come up, but this is this has already been approved. So it's just, it you know, the comments are appreciated, but they should have come up before. It's already, it's already been done. If I may comment for the chair. George. If I may comment through the chair. Yep. The uh, area between the brook and the rail, the railroad right of way, is not being disturbed. Okay, so there is still a significant um, vegetative buffer uh, between uh, the brook and the, the construction site. Mm -hmm. That will remain because that's not part of this property and can't be cleared by by the, the applicant because it doesn't own it. Um, so yeah, there will be uh, a vegetated area, uh, again, between the, uh, the brook and the, uh, the, the, rough, the railroad right away. So um, I, 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 I appreciate the, the comments and the concerns, but I think that um, they, that that the, the vegetative buffer will actually continue to be there. George, is it? It's it's uh, buffered on both sides, isn't it? It's it's pine trees and woods and all that on both yeah, sides. I mean, I mean, the riverfront area can't be disturbed. Okay, oh. and that that's at least a hundred feet away from the brook. Yeah. So that will be left as it is. Now, in some places, yeah, the rough the railroad right away comes closer than a hundred feet. <laughs> but um, the applicant uh, cannot clear anywhere outside of the property that they own. That, right. That, right. I mean. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you you've got 200 feet actually between the brook and most of that property. Additional we comments. No. There's long as they can get me some noise reduction okay thank you so in, in, mm -hmm. is there anyone else anyone else wishes to speak on this matter mr page okay if i can get him in here hang on a minute here we go uh philippe do we need we want to keep the drawing up or or um yeah because i can't see who's in the meeting with this yeah get rid of that I can. You want me to stop share and then reshare? Yeah. Just, if you need to share it again, sorry. we can bring it back up. But thanks. Okay. Mr. Page, you're muted, Ralph. You're muted. Thank you. Um, I, I just had a question with regards to. I didn't realize there was going to be this much soil removed. Um, I understand. Usually, there's a tracking pad, uh, which would be right off of Baldwin Street. Um, do we know what length that is? Um, is it the standard 20 foot tracking pad? 
my concern is you're going to be going in and out with tractor trailers more than likely and 20 feet's probably not going to work and that you may have to go larger than that to keep it clean um, that's one of my concerns the second one is um, will the planning board consider making the contractor responsible for doing a street sweeping like on a bi-weekly process or something just to make sure anything that does make it out it's kept from going all the way down to maple street those were my only two things thank you okay great thank you um just yeah our typical tracking pad length is 50 feet so that's where so we do have one of those proposed and that will be maintained as part of the swip um, permit and the street sweeping certainly something we can take as a condition to street sweep any any you know any anything that gets past the the tracking apron for sure certainly open to that additional comments mr page nope i'm good thank you thank you anyone else wish to be heard on this matter mr christensen okay Sorry about that. Hello. Okay. Um, I'm Charlie Christensen. I own 11 Glendale Road. Um, it's the house that's located pretty much in the middle of your work site. Um, I'm kind of here today in, in two capacities. One is the owner of the business that's in that house and also is the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so I'm a little bit torn with um, having to having to represent myself as the as the landowner with some concerns and at the same time being happy to see a business come into town um we've been trying to work through the middle of the construction so far it's been a couple of weeks really um that the bulk of it's occurring um noise is a big problem it's extremely noisy to the point where we can't function in some of the offices that are facing the property um, and I did not realize there'd be a thousand truckload of fill coming out of Baldwin Street. Um, my business has been located on Baldwin for at least 16 years. I know the area very well. Um, Baldwin's going to have a hell of a time managing that kind of traffic between duck packs traffic in their trucks that stick out into the road when they're loading. Um, children use that road walking back and forth all of the time. Um, and I'm just, I'm just concerned about the dust, the noise. How are we gonna control this? I noticed that on the, on the drawing, and I understand, I, did, I purchased this property at the uh, beginning of last fall. So I wasn't paying very close attention to previous project, you know, the project that was previously approved. But um, I noticed that the berm that's proposed, there's no plantings or anything around our property to help mask it um, during the day so that we're not, you know, looking out at, um, you know, the traffic coming in and out. And, um, you know, I don't know what kind of future noise that'll make. But my biggest concern really is this, this thousand truckloads of uh, dirt and how we're gonna manage that in that industrial area. Um, there's a lot of little businesses down there that have trouble getting in and out as it is. Mr. Cravo, do you wish to address that? Yeah, so, you know, I guess, you know, it's there's a construction period that is associated with any project. So there's gonna be you know, significant noise, especially now with the earth removal um, activities being done on, on site. So I think that if building a berm, you know, stockpiling probably makes the most sense to sort of help mitigate visually, and it will sort of dampen the noise coming off the off of the site from that in that direction. So I think that would make a lot of sense to sort of shield you from any of the visual and 
and hopefully lessen the, uh, the sound coming from the, the activities on that property. But it's, you know, it's not a forever situation. It's certainly something that's going to be, associated, you know, done obviously through construction. But once it's, once it's done, it's a self storage facility. And, you know, you might get one, you know, you know, whoever visits the facility um, that day, that that's, that'll be the, the traffic for the, the parcel. It's just, this is the construction period activity. So there's going to be, you know, certainly a higher volume, you know, right now, the next few months. Yeah, I'm realistic about what needs to happen back there and I'm happy to see it happen. And I'm hoping that we can work together to come up with a mutually agreeable solution. Um, we're very reasonable, but I mean, if you're going to be moving dirt for six months before you even start laying cement building structure, um, I've still got a function. I've got a business to run. We had a dozen oh, people that oh, yeah. have to, you know, they're on the phone all day. Yeah. Um, so I, I just want to know that we've got someone that we're going to be able to work with. And, oh, absolutely. Yep. You know, we can come up with a, a good solution here. So maybe we can sure. have uh, Bethany, who's the director of uh, planning and community development, provide you, Mr. Christensen, with the contact information for Mr. Cravo. That would and be then great. You, you can maybe then address specific uh, uh, noise issues and, and dust issues and so forth directly to him. Yeah. And just realize that if you don't get any type of uh, response, that you could go back to Bethany and we'll go from there. And I appreciate that. We're not, you know, we're not unreasonable. Um, I, I completely understand what you're going to go through to get that place going. Um, so, you know, we do have to just come, come up with something that will. Sure. No, that's, okay. that's very. Thank you for your comments. Great. Right, appreciate thank you. It. Yeah. A any other individual wish to address this matter? One more. Okay. Can somebody hear me? We can hear you, we can't see you. Oh, I don't sure how to do that then. So at the bottom of your screen, there's a little says uh, stop video, start video. Got it. Okay, let's see if you got the camera. There, there we you go. go. Hi. Hi, uh, Donna Utter, 13 Calkins Avenue. And I'm similar to my neighbor, the noise level, already it's incredible and we have a so uh there because it's on the railroad tracks and th this is not five days a week right now it's six days a week and it starts early and goes all day and and imagine what it's going to be like So, so uh, Donna, you're you're frozen. We can't hear you. Okay, you gonna try again? Oh. Yeah, just a. Okay, I don't know what happened. I didn't okay. touch anything. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you started by uh, indicating that uh, the construction's going on for six days a week. I I think you might. Can anybody oh. hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You just got a very poor connection there. <clears throat> Hi, we can hear you if you want to start trying again. Pretty much the same comment as the two yeah. before. Okay. okay. And the response is probably going to be the same. Yeah. Uh, is there any other individual wish to be heard on this matter, Mr. Mackey? There's another hand, yes. Uh, okay. Multi panelists. I'm going to remove Donna Utter. Hello. Hello. Hi. My Hi. name is Shade Garvey. I live at 15 Glendale Road. Hello. Yes. 
<laughs> well, we've got, so Mrs. Utter, I'm going to ask you I to don't know uh, what happened. hold up. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to hold one second. Uh, you were frozen and we brought in another individual and then we will come back to you as, as soon as this individual has uh, completed her testimony. So please proceed. Hi, um, my name is Shadi Garvey. I live at 15 Glendale Road. Um, we actually bought our home in 2019. So this was after you guys approved all your plans and everything. Um, honestly, so we didn't know how much land we actually had until I had my son and then we saw all the overgrowth. So we're in the process of landscaping. And with all the dirt removal, we're kind of worried that that might actually kind of impede on us and might actually require for us to do a lot of cleanup. Also, we do have a 16 month old son. And like everyone is saying, the noise is six days a week. He couldn't even go through his nap on Saturday because of the noise. So we just want to make sure that when we're mitigating the noise, we are thinking about the residential because it is so close to the residential. So, um, our neighbor behind us, um, she's a nurse and she works nights and she, uh, and the noise is happening during the day and she, she just bought the house last October or something like that. So it's really about noise mitigation and also the dirt removal because we are trying to clean up our property. So we want to make sure that the contractor is paying attention to what's going on in the residential area because we are very close. Yeah. So just, uh, just so for people who might still be watching. So, so Bethany uh, sent me a note from our zoning bylaws that no power equipment can operate uh, after the hours of 8 p.m. Um, Monday through Saturday. So none could be on Sunday. I, I think you might find this board to be more amenable to actually further restricting that. So uh, we'll see how that comes. Thank you very much for your comments. Do you have additional comments? No, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate your, your comments. Thank you. So Mrs. Utter, if you're, if you're still on the call, I want to give you an opportunity to say something, if we can hear from you. I'm not sure. My similar to the noise level and okay. being, you know, the Saturdays has just been horrendous. And okay. I can't imagine what it's going to be like with the trucks and the remote. And there is a berm between the, the I assume that berm staying that's between the new building and the railroad tracks. And the noise level, it doesn't matter with that berm. Thank you. Thank you and for I your comments. I appreciate you hearing me and I yeah. appreciate your tolerance with the computer system. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It's a new world for everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank any you. other, any other individual wish to speak yeah. on this matter? <laughs> thank you. So hearing none, I'll hear a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. Motion made and second to close the public hearing. Any discussion on that? Hearing none by roll call, Mr. Richards. Yes. Mr. Punderson. Aye. Mr. Torsha. Yes. Mr. Kingston. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So to bring the matter back to the board, any further discussion or suggestions? Uh, I just like to make two comments, to the to the chair. Yes. Um, one is to put this a little bit in perspective. If they're operating five days a week for six months. Uh, you're looking at something like 10 trucks a day, okay? So a thousand trucks sounds huge, but spread over six months, it's like 10 trucks a day on average. Not just that much. Okay. There'd be days when there's more and days when there's less. I understand that, but um, and I would like to recommend that we restrict the hours of operation uh, from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Okay. Um, as being reasonable, um, and of course they can do less if they want to. Um, and I'm open to how many days a week that might be. Certainly not on Sundays. Okay, um, those are my suggestions. I I have a I have a comment that again it's it's basically basically the third time around with this. Now we all know how many truckloads are going to come out. We know that there's a noise problem. I think all the abutters should be given the information, the contact information for the construction project so they can make a personal complaint that can further be brought back to us through Bethany. Um, 
it's I was gonna say some almost came over. Well anyway, that that that's basically basically what I have to say. It's just it's been done already. So um the sooner they sooner they get started, the sooner it's gonna be over. Jonathan or Tied, any comments? I agree. So yeah, I, 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 I would just comment on George's suggestion. So I think um I think you said eight AM to uh did you say eight AM to seven PM? Seven, yeah. Yeah, and, and Monday through Saturday. I, I I actually think that's a little too uh, liberal. Um, I agree. I agree. I think, um, you know, the, the petitioners, when they were in three, two and a half to three years ago, heard from the neighborhood. There was some concern. They chose to move forward with this project, knowing the concerns of the neighborhood. Um, I would like to maybe uh, make that Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., I think that when people come home from work, they'd like to have some quiet enjoyment of their property um, and quiet enjoyment of their property on the weekends. I would also maybe throw out the following condition that uh, the truck that truck traffic with respect to this only be on Baldwin Street and uh, no use of other um, public ways until you hit Maple Street. And I think I would like to um, also addresses address George's concern about truck traffic going into the rotary, even it's 10 times a day, uh, potentially. Uh, that's a lot to put a, you know, a, a truck that size through the rotary, even though we do have tractor trailers who occasionally try to do it. Um, but we're trying to, you know, one of our goals is to try to protect the public from public safety and adding those additional potential trucks to the rotary traffic, I think could potentially be a, a traffic hazard. So I just, I put those comments out there. Uh, what about Saturday, uh, Russell? You know, I, I could probably be talked into like, you know, eight to one on a Saturday. Um, I don't know how, how the rest of the board feels. Have, have we received any comments from the police department on this? Bethany? No, they did not have a comment. Okay. Well, I would, I would go with Russ and say eight to five Monday through Friday. Um, I mean, eight to three to me would be okay on a weekend, but if you want to say one o'clock, I had to put myself in position of living near there and I would be very grateful for that, that restriction. Yeah, and you've got, and, and center field is used on the weekends for sporting events and so forth. And uh, I'd, I'd like to have some some reaction for that or some. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Eight to five, Monday through Friday, uh, eight to, um, what do you say, one o'clock? Two o'clock? Yes. One o'clock. Yeah, one o'clock sounds better. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm on board with that. And, and I agree with that. Okay. So, so I've made three different suggestions. Um, Maybe let's just vote on each condition separately as we move forward. So does someone want to make a motion on those hours of operation for this, for the earth removal? I'll move the uh, Monday through Friday, eight to five and Saturday, eight to one. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none by roll call, Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Kingston? Aye. And I'm a yes as well. So the second suggested condition was the, the uh, only traffic on Baldwin Street and no other um, streets until they get out to Maple. I think that's an appropriate, that's kind of an industrial area right there. And I don't want any truck traffic into the residential side streets. I, I'd agree with that. I think it's somewhat moot because you can't really turn a tractor trailer onto the only other access street, but uh, I'll agree with that and I'll, I'll make a motion to include that condition. I have a second? Yes, yeah, second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, by roll call, Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Kingston? Aye. And Mr. Torsha? And I'm a yes as well. So I, I guess the third thing that I want to address is George's concern about the, the traffic, either taking a right to go down Maple and away from the rotary or 
do you allow the traffic uh, both lo both both directions? So I'd like to hear what the board thinks. I don't care. Felipe, do you have any idea where they're going to bring the fill to? I don't, not at the moment, no. I don't know if we make, I don't know, you know, if there's any place to the left and through town that would take that type of stuff. Yeah. Probably yeah, gonna we, 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 there's no way we can predict, predict that. We just yeah. gotta decide whether you want to go through the road or not. I, I, I don't really care one way or the other. I obviously prefer they don't. But, um, you know, if they don't go through the rotary, there's going to be all kinds of other streets that are going to try to go through to get to the other side of town anyways. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then how about the, um, I believe, it referenced about the street cleaning at least once a week? On yes. Baldwin? Yes. I agree yeah. with that. Someone want to make a motion on that? I'll make a motion on that that would require uh, street cleaning at least one, once a week, did we say? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Once a week. Um, once a week or as needed. Or as, as needed. needed. Yeah. I was going to say as needed. Oh, less than needed. once a week. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a second on that motion from George? Second. Motion made. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none by roll call. I'll mix it up. Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Kingston? Aye. Mr. Richards? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Any other conditions that that uh, board member might have for this? Hearing none. So as to the um, approval of the special permit with the conditions, do I have a motion? So move. Second. Do I have it seconded? Sec any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Torsha. Yes. Mr. Kingston. Aye. Mr. Punderson. Aye. Mr. Richards. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cravo. Appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Item of, next item of business, Mr. Richards. Uh, case ZN 2021-1, special permit criteria. For the purpose of the amending and clarifying the town of East Long Meadows zoning bylaws by adding under section 7.2 special permits, subsection 7.3 criteria, new item A, all required state and local license must be, must be acquired and kept current. Petitioners, East Long Meadow, Town Council. So I'm gonna ask Bethany to give us a little uh, context on this, please. Sure, so this is actually a condition that's normally in the decision for special permits, and this would just be formalizing it. So it's something that every special permit would have to meet as a criteria. So I believe Mr. Page is here, probably representing the town council. Mr. Page? Yes, I am. Um, so as you know, um, uh, in the past, we had an issue with a business that didn't have a um, kennel license. Uh, when the attorney looked at the bylaw, he made a suggestion that there may be uh, different ways to um, go about requiring um, licenses and uh, to make sure everything's current. Um, so the bylaw committee of the town council looked at it. Um, we suggested this language. Um, I think it's multi-purpose because there's other uh, types of businesses that require uh, state licenses. And by wording it like this, this will include um, not only the kennels, but uh, something like a massage therapy salon, which requires state licenses. And um, we thought it would uh, work best for everything. Do, are there any questions from the board for Mr. Page? Yes. Uh, does, does, it, it's not clear to me from the um, wording whether the licenses need to be in place before the permit is issued and whether um, the lapse of a license would cause the uh, automatic uh, lapse of the permit. Can you clarify? So from my days on the planning board, I know that um, some state licenses, um, you can't even uh, receive the state license until you go through the special permit process. Um, so there was a catch 22 in there. Um, so in certain situations, you can't even, like I said, get the state license until it goes through the special permit. Um, I mean, 
like I said, if, if there's an adjustment in the language that anyone likes that they can suggest, um, we're definitely open for it. Um, any, any other questions for Mr. Page? So this, this is the public hearing for this. So um, if there's no other questions from the board, I will uh, open the public hearing on this matter. If there's anyone in the audience who would like to be heard on this matter, please uh, raise your hand so you can be brought into the meeting. Don, is there anyone? Not so far, nope. Okay, hearing none, do I have a um, motion to close the public hearing? So moved. So it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Kingston? Aye. Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. And I, and, uh, I am yes as well. So the public hearing has been closed. Back to the board. Um, George, is this something that you wish Mr. Page to maybe get a clarification? And we continue this until we get a clarification to your question? No, I, I, I understand the issue of Catch-22 on having everything in place before it's issued. Um, I would just like to add to the language that they came up with um, a sentence that says, uh, failure to meet this criteria <clears throat> will be grounds for revocation of the special permit. So it, it's clear that um, we have the authority on the lapse of a license to revoke the special permit. Because we were always going through this, you know, can we or can we not revoke? Um, and what, what grounds? And I, I think just adding a sentence that says, failure to meet this, this criteria is, is grounds for uh, revoking the special permit. That doesn't mean it automatically lapses. It means that um, we get the, the holder of the special permit in uh, to uh, explain or to renew the license, one or the other. Okay. So through the chair? Yes. Um, so there's a multiple list of criteria that's required for the special permit. Um, and I, I'm trying to remember, I thought there was something in there that said, um, basically you have to meet this criteria in order to get a special permit, which my understanding was if you don't meet the criteria, then the special permit can be revoked. Um, and again, I don't have my bylaw in front of me. I, I can't believe that. <laughs> uh, we find that hard to believe as well, Mr. Page. <laughs> I'm unprepared. <laughs> um, I, 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 you know, I'm actually in favor of George's, George's suggestion. Um, George, do you want to do you want to make that in the form of a? a I, I will move to, that to amend. Uh, I will make that as a motion that we we add a sentence saying failure to um, meet this criteria or is grounds for revoc revocation of the special permit. Do we have a second? Second. Any dis uh, so a motion made and second. Any discussion on that amendment? Hearing none. Um, so do I hear a motion to approve um, the, the change? Sorry, the Russ, I just had a comment. Do you want to add at the end of that um, revocation of the special permit by the special permit granting authority? Or that is sounds that sounds good? That sounds yeah. good. Thank you. Okay. So motion to approve uh, with the corrected language and amended language um, combined. So I think that'll do it for a motion. Um, so who would like to move that? I, I made the motion, so. Okay, good. Did we have a oh. second on that? All right, motion made and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, back to Mr. Richards. Yes. Mr. Torsha. Yes. Mr. Kingston. Yes. Mr. Punderson. Aye. And I'm a yes as well, okay. Thank you, Mr. Page. Pleasure to see you. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Take care. Next item. Director's report. Hmm. Bethany. Sure. So I'll just give you a quick update about um, two items. The first is the master plan. 
Um, PVPC has been hard at work and they submitted a draft of the master plan chapters for review by the master plan committee. Um, if any members of the planning board wants to have a look at that before um, the master plan committee uh, submits any comments, I will send it off to you tomorrow morning. I, I um, think you might want to just send it to each member of the board. Please, okay. please do. Yep, yeah. yep. Um, and feel free to send your comments back to me and I'll get them to um, PVPC so they can review and George, on that, what, what is the deadline for comments? Because it's 128 pages. <laughs> yeah, I'm on page five. So I think it's two weeks okay. um, before their next committee meeting, which I believe is, let's see, is the 28th. Okay. I'll, so, I'll have you comments by the 28th. So I have a question on process on this. So um, eventually there will be a master plan and who, who decides the final product? I believe it's the planning board adopted. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Um, I guess Is that a, does that require a public hearing? Uh, that's a good question. I don't believe so, but I will, I'll double check. So the sooner we get a, a chance to look at the contents, I think the better we would be able to discuss it when it comes to us in a, in a formal agenda item. So. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, the next item I was going to uh, update the board on is the local rapid recovery plan. Um, we had our first site visit with some of the staff from PDPC. John and George were able to join us. Um, just doing a quick up and down of the street. It's very different walking it as opposed to driving it. So that was very interesting. Um, we'll be back out there tomorrow morning uh, starting at 10 a.m. So if anybody wants to join uh, Lori Tanner and Greg out there, um, that's where they'll be and they'll be wearing their yellow vests. So you'll be able to see them. Um, we're still collecting information and handing out flyers and surveys. Um, the next step will be identifying stakeholders that we can meet with and listen um, and take down their individual concerns as far as the economic uh, issues that the pandemic has brought on. And what's our agenda look like for the 20th meeting? At the moment, I don't have any special permits or public hearings. So it might just be um, the site plan waivers. Okay. I think we all got a note today from Rebecca that uh, she needs our signature. Uh, so if you can just make arrangements the next day or two or three to uh, to go in and see her or come, or stand outside and see her at town hall, it might be better, better <laughs> suited I, I that way. I think tomorrow a little bit after two, Rebecca. Okay. Sounds good, just call me when you're about five minutes away and I'll be outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I sent you a response a little bit earlier. Thank and you. I must, and I must tell you, with spring here, it's much nicer to do it outside than <laughs> in the middle of February when you're out there trying to sign these things. That is true, yes. All right. Any other matters properly before this committee, before the planning board? Hearing none, a motion to adjourn. Do I have a motion and second, please? Second. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mr. Torsha? Yes. Mr. Punderson? Aye. Mr. Kingston. Aye. Mr. Richards. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Everyone have a great night. You have too. Have a good night. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for dinner. Bye.